Welcome back to The Full View on SABC News. Will the highest judge in the land be humbled? The Judicial Conduct Committee has ordered that Chief Justice Mekhweng Mekhweng retract statements that he made about Israel during a webinar hosted by the Jerusalem Post in June 2020 and apologize. Now, in the video, Mekhweng said that as a Christian, he was obliged to love and pray for Israel. The South African BDS Coalition and two other organizations had lodged the complaint, saying that his utterances were pro-Israel and inappropriate. Now, they were made on the eve of South Africa raising a debate in the UN Security Council that was in support of the human rights of the Palestinian people. Now, the South African Zionist Federation says the comments were legitimate and impartial and that the judgment should be reviewed. Let's get a legal view now from a retired constitutional court judge, Johan Krechler. Judge Krechler, thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, we appreciate it. We, we haven't heard from a Hwang uh, but previously he said he won't apologize and, and he does have an appeal option right can we just uh, clarify that first up good evening francis good evening to the viewers thanks for having me on the show i i, I would like to clarify any questions that you do have the point is that there is a mechanism in terms of the judicial service commission act in with which Judges who are alleged to have misbehaved are dealt. There's at first a preliminary screening. Then if it's decided there is some kind of a case, a Judicial Conduct Committee representative looks at the case. If the Judicial Conduct Committee member thinks it's a serious case, he refers it to the Judicial Service Commission, which then appoints a tribunal and it has a full-scale hearing which may end eventually in the judge being taken to parliament for his dismissal. On the other hand, the judge who looks at the case can also say, this is a case, yes, but it's not that serious a case. I can deal with it myself. He then deals with it. And if he finds the judge guilty of the complaint and imposes a punishment, some sanction, the judge has the right to appeal against either the verdict or the sentence. At the same time, the complainant could lodge an appeal if the complaint were to be dismissed. In this instance, the complaint was upheld in some respects and a remedy, a, a sanction was imposed and the Chief Justice does have a right of appeal against that to the Field Judicial Conduct Committee and, if necessary, to the Judicial Service Commission. It's a long and elaborate process in order to screen judges from meritless complaints. They, in, in most cases, you give a judgment, somebody's going to be dissatisfied. The loser is always dissatisfied, and you've got to protect judges against that kind of complaint where people are unhappy with a verdict. Yeah. This is not that kind of case, and it is dealt with quite quickly and firmly under the Judicial Service Commission proceedings. Given what uh, the Chief Justice has said in the past, that he will never apologise, and, and remember he's been very open about the fact that he's a Christian and he has certain views, um, so he's likely to appeal. So, so how long uh, a process are, are we looking at? Um, certainly it's not the end, so he can appeal, and you said it could eventually go to a tribunal. Could, could this go on for a very long time? Francis, I can tell you it's as long as a piece of string. Judge Slope of the Western Cape has managed to delay and postpone and kick down the line uh, the case against him from 2008. 2008. It's still not been determined. I doubt very, very much whether the Chief Justice will indulge in the kind of Stalingrad tactics that Judge Slope did, but it can take a long time. It can certainly take a long time. Yeah. The case as it is has been dealt with with unprecedented speed. That's very, I don't know of any complaint to the Judicial Service Commission that has been dealt with with such expedition. It's remarkable and commendable. And I must also say, Francis, let's, let's just 
celebrate the fact that we live in a country where not the, even the chief justice is protected from complaints against misbehavior on his part. Yeah. We're all subject to the constitution. We're all only entitled to do that which the law allows us to do. Yeah, and even we're not allowed to do that. The law disallows. Even he is not above the law, as you say. May I ask your personal opinion? Do you think he was wrong here? Yes, I, I do. That's my opinion. Uh, I, I do believe that uh, in, in light of the highly emotive, charged atmosphere around the Palestinian issue, the Palestinian-Israeli issue, that has been festering for many, many years, and which here in South Africa is a hot political potato. Uh, it's, it's unwise for anybody to express any opinion in public unless it is necessary. That topic one should rather leave to the experts to discuss in expert tribunals. For a judge to express a view, even in the context of a religious conviction discussion is unwise and it was unwise on the part of the Chief Justice to do that. Yeah. Uh, I simply hope at some stage he will see that that is in fact the case. He is, he's not a, not a child. He's a, he's a wise man. I, I, I trust he will rethink the attitude that he had before yeah. now that he sees how carefully Judge Mojapello has spelled out in, in, in great detail and in personally, I think, exceptionally clear and sympathetic language showed to Judge Mokweng just why he was wrong. I, I, I trust he will accept that advice. I think he was wrong. I think Judge Mojapello has explained it in words of just about one syllable that anybody can understand. Yeah. And it's great that he went to such obvious great trouble to spell it out so carefully. Okay, so, so you like the wording of, of the judgment itself. It's interesting because we know judges have to be careful because a, a matter could come before them. Uh, then they've given their views. They can be seen as impartial. This is a global geopolitical issue, though, unlikely to land up on his um, desk. But you're saying that doesn't make the difference. So it's still, uh, you have to be careful um, what you say in a politically charged environment. No, quite clearly. The fact that it's unwise for a judge to comment on the matter that come before him is obvious. Uh, but this is, this is not exactly that. This is a judge expressing a view on a, on a publicly disputed quasi-political issue. It's not our politics directly, but it is very much a political issue in South Africa. We know that. Certain political parties have made it part of their program. The issue is hotly contested here, and judges should stay out of contention on any such issue. It's an emotional issue. It's not something in which we should get involved unless we have to, and we do so in court within the corners of the job that we need to do. So I, I suspect... May I add? Yeah, you, sure, go ahead. Uh, Francis, at the moment, and for some years now, politicians have been throwing bricks at the judiciary. They're unsatisfied, they're dissatisfied with, with the judgment. They accuse the judge of bias or dishonesty. Latterly, even, there have been allegations that judges are bribed. Nobody has come forward with a word of evidence to that effect. But it is unwise in that kind of delicate atmosphere for judges to, to be contentious on any issue. Uh, and, and for that reason also, it is it's regrettable that we've had this squabble about what the, yeah. the judge, the chief has had to say uh, about an ostensibly political, uh, ostensibly religious, but actually political topic. 
All right, uh, saying constraint is, is part of the job. Thank you very much for your time with us tonight. That was retired Constitutional Court Judge Johan Krichler.